Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Mortgage Heroes Weekly Podcast. I'm Andy. I'm back, and I'm Brian. And I'm Will. Well, okay, guys, this is <laughs> our <are> final show <laughs> Final show of the year. Uh, so glad to have you guys all together today. Let's Brian, go. Thanks for being back. And like we said last week on the show, we're like, hey, Brian will be in the comments. <laughs> Brian, I was. Brian was in the comments. And as a matter of fact, Justin Garcia, if you're watching this right now, please yeah. reach out to us. We're trying to get out to uh, reach out to you as well. So please, please make sure you reach out to us. Head uh, to the link in our bio, and then we'll make sure we take care of you, brother. That's yeah, right. That's thank right. you. Thank you. All the great questions you've all been asking all year long, that's been just phenomenal. Just gets us better it makes us make sure that we bring you the best information we can bring yes yeah, right so today guys on deck we got uh, four articles we got the housing Nicole. market update declining mortgage rates lure sellers off sidelines paving the way for 2024 buyers we got mortgage rates continue downward trend housing market still sluggish why home prices haven't crashed even with high mortgage rates and mortgage rates are dropping here's what to expect in 2024 if you want to buy a home the experts say so our first one today guys comes in from redfin new to the show redfin oh, article redfin. being inside here Credit to Brian for this one. Uh, this one's called Housing Market Update, Declining Mortgage Rates Lure Sellers Off Sidelines, Paving the Way for 2024 Buyers. And essentially, this is some insights from Redfin. Now, this, of course, uh, out the front, I want to just make sure I tell everybody watching, this does not mean this is the same for every other brokerage, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. Redfin is really large. And so getting some assessment and some numbers here actually helps us give somewhat of a generalized opinion yeah. on some things. So let's look at what they say, and then we'll talk about what we think that means here locally for us in San Diego. Um, first, they're predicting that sales are going to climb after the typical holiday lull, which I think we agree with because the uh, frozen housing market is thawing. Uh, they mm. have a <laughs> steep increase. It says they have a double-digit annual increase in this week for homeowners contacting them to help get selling on their homes. And new listings are up 9% from a year ago, their biggest annual increase since July of 21. Wow. wow. July of 21. Yeah. So, well, I, I, you know, definitely, definitely, this news has really gotten sellers and buyers off the fence. You know, it's like good news. I mean, October was brutal, you guys. And I know we kept saying this even on our on our last uh, podcast, we talked about it. October was definitely very brutal. And I think people get to see if my rates are in the mid seven slash eights, where am I at? What can I do? Everything's so darn expensive. So now they see a big dip. And I mean, that big dip has been more than an, uh, a full percentage lower yeah. than what it was. So it makes a huge, huge difference where people are now feel like I got to get off the fence and I got to go create the action behind it or I'm going to be left behind. No, 100%. And right here it, from the article, it says buyers will return from holidays with more homes to choose from. And I think that's actually going to be true because I feel like a lot of people with this downward pressure of the rates is going to bring a lot of people that in the past months were like on the fence. And now that they see the rates coming yeah. down, I think there's going to be a sweet spot up until February before everybody starts, you know, really jumping the gun. Yeah. And again, Brian, I mean, to the to that point, when you say there's going to be more like homes available, like. Let's not mistaken. There's going to be a lot more homes. No, no, we're no. used to having at least on a monthly basis nine hundred thousand to a million homes available. Yeah. We're in like in the mid four hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're way so below. The what we're si we're not going to. I don't think we're going to. I know for sure we're not going to get to the point to see that nine hundred for <laughs> sure. Pre COVID right? levels, nope, never. And like something <laughs> not, not in a long time. Yeah, something impactful has to happen before we see those numbers. Yeah. And I don't see anything or any data indicating that we're going to have those big impacts. I mean, unless... Well, what I do feel is that the people that did need to move, that lower 2% uh, two percent yeah. is going to help them you know, take those golden handcuffs for them, right? But that doesn't mean that it's going to flood the gates with uh, with uh, enough inventory for all of the you know demand that we have. That's correct. But there is going to be slightly more than there was these previous months. Yeah. But only for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And I was actually taking it back to, to to the beginning of 2022, where in December of 21, similar similar rates started to go up and then they started to come down. I mean, in 20, at the end of 2022, again in December, they started to come down only for a little bit of period of time until the spring started creeping in and then they rose yeah. back up and then prices of homes went back up and then you know we get <laughs> yeah. what happened there but the big <laughs> the big outlier difference in this case at least from my side of yeah. the table is that it, back in december 22 we didn't have the feds pausing rate hikes no. they were still hard charging with rate hikes looking into 2023 now yeah. they're looking into 2024 going oh possible cuts or at least signaling that there's possible cuts so i think that everyone's like kind of 
I'm not going to say rushed in the gate, but there's definitely been a move towards people that were on the fence getting off the fence. We're already seeing that in our own uh, applications were being taken. Number two, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring this up at this segment of the show. When we had our meeting this week and you guys told me, well, you specifically, Memo, you told me about that open house this last weekend. Oh, that was crazy, yes. Yes. So the open house had, how, go ahead, tell everybody, how many, so, how many groups came through that open house? So it was crazy. We have one of our buyers that was searching for a home. Went with their with this realtor, um, and um, we get they're shopping in the in the weekend. And it was a Saturday, so anyways, we get the they presented an offer. Here comes Monday, and they're saying like, "Hey, we had a lot of activity. We had a hundred and fifty people <laughs> come through the open house with fourteen offers." Yours was one of a one of those offers considered, so we're going to send you a multiple counter offer. Wow. I wow. know it's crazy. Fourteen. Okay, so hundred is it one hundred fifty people or one hundred fifty groups? One hundred fifty people. I I Dang. think if he says Even groups, that's too many. Groups, like, that's, that's, that's huge. Well, that's, that's too much. That's not, probably let's say each one came with uh, two people in there. Well, sure. That's three hundred. But what that's I'm saying, too many. What I'm, math is good. Yeah. Actually. What I'm saying is like even if even if one hundred fifty people total was. 20 or 30 groups. That's a ton, number one. And then 14 offers on one. We talk about this all the time. What's that ratio? 14 to one. One person's going to get in and 13 are going to be left out well, in the lurch. So what happened to the other 149 parties? Yeah, yeah well. exactly. And here we are, right? Rates are still in that, you know, we're, we're in the low sixes, mid sixes for conventional, you know, mid mid fives, high fives in the government. So this is has to this is with the ten percent down conventional loan. So the rates are gonna be like six point three seven five more or less. It, what, what I do see for or foreshadowing and what happens is that, you know, even if rates do come down, I think if more people come into the market, that's gonna prop the prices to say where they're at. So we're not gonna see much price decline in the year to come because of the lower rates, right? So that's gonna hold prices now. As the prices stay where they're at and more people come into the market, prices are gonna start climbing yeah. up, you know, here and there and that's going to squeeze out again the people that aren't strongly yeah. approved or don't have that stronger income to be able to withhold yeah. the higher price even and, if the rates are lower and this tracks with what redfin's saying they're basically saying we're seeing uptick in listings you're seeing buyers come yeah. off the fence you're seeing rates uh prompt people you're mentioning golden handcuffs i was gonna bring that up but it's like that is the thing so some people who are maybe waiting for a financially advantageous time to list their home might start doing that <laughs> right yeah. now yeah, yeah. And then you also see people, again, and we've talked about this before, where there are life situations that happen no matter what the rate market looks like. It yeah. doesn't matter if the rates are 10% or 20% when someone passes away or your debt gets too large or you you know, you know lose a job or whatever, you get divorced. There, there's other life circumstances that prompt people to sell. There's always going to be a subset of that. Correct. I think what is changing now is that in addition to all that, it is the rates going down. Buyers warming up, and you see listing. You yeah. see people, sellers coming off uh, can, the market. Of course, can I, share, can I share a success story that goes along with what yeah, you just said? So go. I have a client right now, a VA client. He purchased a house two years ago, has a smoke and low rate, two and a half percent. Messages me last week, and he says, "Hey Brian, my life is taking a, a change as of these last couple of, of months. I'm going back and forth between deployment." I just met a very nice lady who is also military, has her own house, she's owned it for longer, and he told me right now. I have over a hundred thousand dollars in equity. I've been seeing the houses get sold around my area, well over a hundred, a hundred k that I'm going to be able to bank, right? And he says, right now, it financially makes more sense for me to sell the house, cash in on my equity, wipe out all my debt, move in with my lady that has a lower payment than mine, wow. hold that property for a couple more years build a family, have a foundation, and then I'm going to come back to you, Brian, so that we could sell this house and then buy a forever house where That's we're going to be a cool. family. Again, wow. when did he buy that house? He bought that in 2021. So you, and, then, and it goes to my second topic. What investment is going to give you over $100,000 in less than two years? Bitcoin, if you hit it right. Oh, okay. my God. <laughs> <laughs> you messed my point up. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. But 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 look at that volatility and how much you have to be on yeah. top of that to not lose your money. Absolutely. We're on a mortgage and in real estate, you just got to pay your, your well, monthly mortgage that's every true, month. True, but here's there's the, the thing, behavioral be, part. Yeah. yeah. There's the behavioral part. He didn't do it to invest. He did it because he was looking for a house. He happened my, to get the game. Sorry. Go ahead. You say it too. Ready? On three. One, two, one, three. two three. He happened. To <laughs> he just didn't want to be a renter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't yeah, to, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But you know? again, th but here's here's the here's my takeaway from that. This is why we keep telling people. Buy the freaking house because you don't know at what point you're going to be in that situation. And I'm not done. And I'm what? not done. You're and not I'm done. done. So then I started speaking to him about the benefits of, you know, utilizing real estate to invest. You know, he yeah. says he wants a family. He wants to build on, you know, on, on wealth. He wants to leave something for his family, build a legacy. Ooh. Right. And I'm like, so you're telling me you have a VA loan and you didn't know that you can put 0% down on a one to four unit property. He's like, 
what what i, I can do that i'm like yeah. he instantly looked at me and uh, my partner blake he was like i need to start hanging out with you guys a lot more yeah and uh and that's the truth you know if you don't know then how are you supposed to make these things happen so for me that was such a huge huge just being able to be there in that's the room crazy. and be able to give him that information and i'm sorry i mean bro. brian you're young that's cool <laughs> how young is it how, how, how young is your client oh uh, he's 35 damn he sounds like he's <laughs> as old as me man I, I got that together like two years ago when i knew a solid plan but i mean yeah. You know, this is great that he's got a solid plan like that. And he's already thinking ahead, right? He's yeah. already setting up the path of success. So here's the other thing that I That's think cool. that made other people say like, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm going to get off the fence because they read that article that NAR, National Association of Realtors, put out back in April, yeah. right? And it said that homeowners have 40% are, are 40% times higher in, in um, I'm sorry, let me read it. Okay, homeowner wealth is 40 times higher yeah. than renters. That's 100%. Right. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I read that f back in April, my whole mission's been like every person I speak to, I want them to be that 40%. Yeah. You know, yeah. so now I'm looking at like, how do we create you to be that 40%? Yeah. You don't own a home. You never owned a home. You never use your VA. How do we help you now? Be that forty percent. I almost feel like it's a mission now, right? It is, and and and, and like for me, that I had that a hot same aha moment when our clients I, we asked them, "Hey, how much do you think you're gonna make?" Uh, probably like 40, 50 k. And then we did we did a breakdown of them. I'm like, "Bro, you're gonna be netting around one hundred thirty five k once you're done paying closing costs, like estimated." Yeah. And he looked at us like, "Are you?" <laughs> I can do so much with yeah. that. I already like. Yeah. So in math, is that forty percent? Andy? Well, uh, <laughs> it's, no, forty times, not forty percent. Yeah. Forty times. Forty right? times. Right. But, I mean, look here. I mean, this this all this all goes hand in hand, right? You're talking about the, you know we start off with this section talking about the whole Redfin thing, and it's like, look, median oh, sales prices are up. Yeah. Median asking price is up. You have months of supply, which is going back up. You have new listings going up. So we have clients that are in this advantageous position yeah. because at a point at time when maybe it didn't look 100% certain, they still took the right choice. Yeah. And it turned out to be even more of a right choice now because now he's in a situation where yeah. life changed. And you look back and go, oh, I've had all this gain since then. Now this gain can actually help me out and work out. Mm -hmm. I mean, this... You know, there's a lot of charts and graphs in this article today, guys. I don't want to go over all of them, but um, <laughs> I know, you know, I noticed. But, uh, I think the, you do. No, I don't. Like you do. I, I don't because this story proves the point. I mean, yeah. it was about this. Like, it, I know in your example here, Brian, you're talking about local here in San Diego. So yeah. it's definitely more than a, 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 the median sales price increase oh, na nationwide. But again, that's local to us. There are places that are down, but not down like thirty percent. They're down like seven. They're down six or five or ten, but they're not down thirty. And no. San Diego's not yeah. up thirty over that same period of time. But the median, it, it, it beats. San Diego beats the median all the time. Yeah. 100%. And you know what I like about all this, and I'm glad that Redfin did share all this, it's all good data. It's data that's being utilized based on the history of the performance of our yep. market, our real estate market. So, you know, saying all this, we also have people who are very pessimistic about it and saying, you should be waiting. You should not be buying. You shouldn't take, these rates are way too high, this, that, that, But you know, what we've been noticing of the people in 2023 it was a slow year for everyone. I don't care yeah, who you yeah, are. 100%. It's been it's been a brutal year, some very different to adjust and pivot and just, you know, but we have to become the chameleons. And the way we do that is by obtaining the proper information and data so that we're able to pass it on to our consumers and mm -hmm. set them up for mm -hmm. success. So they are part of that 40%, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I like about the data, it, it doesn't lie. It's telling us exactly what we really need yeah. to be doing. So people getting off the fence, mm -hmm. something you need to do. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, I use it kind of like when I talk to Ashton, you know, oh, I don't want to go to college. I don't want to. Yeah, I get it. College is not for everybody, right? But it, it's all about who you're going to tie your rafts with. People who are just going to make you that much better. And sometimes you got to just get off the fence mm -hmm. and not play that mind game yeah. of the things that may not happen. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a final point to that, to a, a punctuation point on that, and it is data and math, and it has to do with the ho um, home buyer housing payments increasing 11% year over year, but wage growth only go up 5.2%. So I had to look Brutal. it up on the Bureau of Labor Statistics before the show. Uh, annual, this is as of November 2023, uh, wage yeah. growth up 5.2%. And uh, you have housing payments up 11%. So at what point is that going to be better? I don't know. because But you don't know. So it's like, okay, get in now or don't get in now. Well, yeah. people are going to have to make that choice for themselves. So.
And to that point, I feel it really comes down as well to the, you know, to the consumer's financial habits and as well to their financial responsibilities, which will dictate, you know, what their affordability will be. And I think, you know, with everything happening and all this data coming out, the affordability overall to me seems the biggest issue, you know, because housing, housing prices, they will stabilize when they stabilize rates. As we see, things are getting better. You know, monetary policy is looking like it's working, but the affordability, that's where it gets tough because you can't make more if you don't have a way of making more, you know, and you directly control that. That's right. If you you can control your income, you you can't control where you work at. I yeah. mean, you you can, you can. But, at the, but at the same time, it's like, well, if I take a different job, now I have to you know lose out on a, on that learning curve. Yeah. yeah. I mean, while rates are while rates have come down, and if they continue to go down, this is the time to, to put your foot through that door. When that yeah. door opens, put your foot through that door and get started. And, yeah. and, and and I will say this, and advice to you know to the younger generation that's listening to this, if you had a bad year, take this time to learn from it mm. and actually look at the look at the reason why it went bad look at the reason you know your decisions because overall i feel like we're all responsible for the decisions we make we can't control the economy we can't control rates or the market but we can't control our habits and that's one of the things that me myself you know being vulnerable out here it's something that this year i had to do and really face the reality it's like hey this is what's happening this is what's going on and really formulate a plan so it doesn't happen again. that's right you know and And that's all i can say you know yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) you know to go off of that i mean brian come on now those are the things we were doing so well and 2023 was a brutal year. Yeah. It really was. I mean, it messes with you mentally and all that. So I could just imagine just the regular homeowner mm-hmm. who it, doesn't have a lot of resources, et cetera, right? It doesn't know this. So the thing that we're do moving forward from here on out now is I, you know, I used to just be focused. Let me just do my job right. Just what I know how to do right. But that doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. Like now I have to start thinking like, well, beyond that, how do I create this passive income now? Like, how do I create generational wealth? Those are the things now that we have to kind of, you feel like you're juggling and hopefully you're not just going to, you know, mess, a, a ball's just not going to click and here, one's going to fall. Like, you really have to learn how to juggle these things. And, and you have to start pl- planning, managing, look at the data, making sure that you're making the right choices here. So I like that, Andy, you shared this article actually, Brian, right? But I really think this is a great article because it's going to show you new listings of homes. It's going to show you pending homes, uh, homes that are currently in contract right now mm-hmm. that actually have price declines because this month was one of the highest ones yeah. that mm-hmm. we saw a big price reduction mm-hmm. on them. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean... now. Remember, guys, this does not mean that home prices are going down. What that actually means a lot of times is based on the data before, there's a lot of times that we have the tendency of thinking my home is worth a million too when it's really worth a million. Yep. You know, And the market is going to really dictate that mm-hmm. for that area, what's it going to be? So we saw, it was like I read, it was like a 38% you know, price decline this month, which was a lot higher than the mm. norm. You know, than the previous year, but I think this would be a great article to put out where people they can see the graphs, yeah, understanding, just see the math. Yeah, you know, yeah, volume of sales. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, volume of sales, no, different than home price, but yeah, that's also in the gutter from the fall of twenty three, and it's going to look better in twenty twenty four. Absolutely. All right, guys. So uh, next article up is mortgage rates continue downward trend, but housing market still sluggish. Um, I don't know if I completely uh, agree with that, but because I think we're already starting to get out yeah. of that a little bit. But uh, this trend is beginning to spark signs of life in the stalled real estate market. But economists do not expect affordability to improve materially anytime soon. Uh, in the last segment of the show, of course, I cited already that the Bureau of Labor Statistics showing that wage earnings is only 5.2%, while house price uh, monthly costs went up by 11.2%. Mm. So there's a huge disparity in that. Um, but I think that's going to change. Um, I think you're going to see wages go up. I think debt service costs are going to go down with the Fed signaling that they're going to have rate cuts in 2024. I think you're going to see carrying costs of debt go down. Now, here's always the outlier. Will people actually spend their money on paying down their debt? That's yeah. it. Like that's it. That that's the outlier in that situation. You know, if if uh, adjustable rates are going to go down, or, uh, carrying costs of having debt go down, you'll see car loans go down, lines of credit go down. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as the percentage rate attached to those, they're going to go down. So I think some of that's going to get better, but we'll see. Yeah. Financial uh, habits. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I think the, the idea here is that they want to bring potential home buyers who are previously waiting on the sidelines back into the market. Of I think course. that's already happening. Um, you know, the Commerce Department reported that housing starts surged 14% last month, signaling progress in the stagnant building market, uh, which is great because for a long time, you know, I talk about Monday Mortgage Minute, we look at permits, building, um, building permits that are pulled, and we look at new housing starts. Uh, you know, they've been kind of thin, but also yeah. builder sentiment was high in December. It so really builder was. sentiment came back high. Now you see actual data, to your point before, data showing that housing starts is up 14.8% last mm. month. That's a big deal. That's great. That's a good sign. 
So that, we've that been just builders are building. Builders are confident. Yeah. Confidence is going up. Oh yeah, you know? we've been talking about you know inventory for like all the f- whole freaking year of 2023. Yeah. S- super low inventory, not enough uh, houses on the market, not enough months of supply, etc. Car- carve it. Yeah. Carve it any way you want. We've had that problem, but builders coming back was one of our solutions. We talked about like, hey, we need builders. Hey, builders, come on back, builders, yeah. come on back. But I understand why they want to build at eight percent rates. I totally I, get that. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. Now that the rates are starting to you know come down, this gives them that confidence to be like, hey, now we can actually make money on our on our on our on our investments here. So, Correct. you know, that's going to ease up a little bit of a uh, inventory crisis. But then again, they're not going to build overnight, you yeah. know, millions and millions of houses. Sure. But that is going to help, you know, as the time progresses. But if the horizon of building is, let's say, you know, 12 to 18 months from mm-hmm. permit to, you know, putting keys in someone's hand, uh, that does carry us into 2025 and even 2026. And then if those are same, those same forecasted, let's say, soft landing, the Fed's projecting by 2026, also seeing rate cuts start in 2024, continue in 25 and 26, then... Builders may have done the right thing by sitting on the sidelines for 2023 and just go, hey, let's just wait for <laughs> hey, a minute. Hey, they played the Fed let's right. <laughs> just, let's just see. But then you see you see house prices holding. You see median home price going up. So it's like rates are coming down. So affordability can return. Home prices yeah. are stabilized, maybe going up. Builders are like licking their chops right now. Yeah. I mean, if I, I'm i pitching it to myself this way, and I'm like, oh, man, that sounds awesome. So you're awesome. becoming a builder all of a sudden, yeah. Andy? Okay, I got to go. <laughs> They're like this right behind. <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. Yeah, behind the tree in the yellow suit. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> you know, here's the other thing with builders, right? <laughs> Everything seems so. Everything seems so good, but everything can change really fast. That's true. It's very you true. Know, cause, Fair yeah, point. Because we're, we're seeing right now with the Fed uh-huh. kind of seesawing everything with our gross domestic products and unemployment, and so they got to keep a tight lid on all these economic indicators, factors that factor in. So they just got to make sure they all level up, right? And that's what they're playing right now is that seesaw game. And let's hope the supply chain holds because Yemen's putting on pressure as well. So oh, that's know? a conversation for later, though. The great thing <laughs> yeah, is, that's yeah. another conversation. The yeah. great thing is we're going into an election year also yeah. that, you know, what president wants high unemployment, what president wants high interest yeah. rates. So they really want to st- see a little more of a stable economy. So I think a lot of this... You know, is good and good news. But yeah. we already know, guys, with lower interest rates, some problems and solutions are fixed, but it also creates other problems. Yeah, yeah. I think that's going to be um, that you're going to have you're going to have bidding again. Yeah. Uh, number one, I yeah. think it's going to uh, disincentivize builders from doing um, incentives for <laughs> they'll disincentivize builders yeah. giving incentives to buyers. Um, and, you know, again, to the labor point, I mean, the labor's got to come from somewhere. Correct. And so people got to build these homes. Products got to be there. Supply has to be there. Rates have to be there. So there's yeah. a lot of factors. But um, well, what was so interesting to me about the end of this article was that, um, that, that the housing market, which remains undersupplied, the median list price for home in the United States in November of 2023 was 37% higher than 2019. And I haven't seen this comparison yet. So this is basically, without saying it, a pre-pandemic, post-pandemic metric and 37% higher in four years. Well, I mean, 2020 was a massacre. It was crazy. Yeah. 2021 was another crazy year. I mean, come on. That's when we're competing. Okay, so earlier we said we had 150 people going through it. 14 offers. 2020, 21. Do you want to go through that? 50 offers. It almost felt like a pain in the butt. Like, (laughs) honestly. She, even if you had buyers, good luck. <laughs> you, I got a whole bunch of buyers. You got houses? You got yeah. contracts? Wait, hold on, there hold, was on. Actually, hold on, there hold was, on. <laughs> you guys still both got people in homes. What no, are you talking but, about? But we did, but we there, was, there more. was more inventory, Andy. There well, was more I, inventory, no, right? I know that, but even with 50 people, you're still getting people, in, 50 offers, you're still getting people in homes. But still, Andy, it was very difficult because a lot of, we also did not get a lot of people in. That's, that's true. Okay? I'm, try, I'm trying so, to give you a pat on so, the back. No, and, and thank you. And I will pat myself <laughs> on the ones that we worked in, thanks to our realtor partners that did a great a wonderful job to get our, our clients in and negotiate, right? It takes a team to make sure yeah. that we get them in. But there was also other people that had dreams and they don't have them right now. Yeah. Because, you know, with that also, they got to, they didn't have that $100,000 or $150,000 extra to, to put extra. in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Some of them barely had enough money for even closing costs. And remember, at that point in time, no, nobody's buddy. helping. Sellers are like, why? Yeah, the right. the, the terms are to. ridiculous. Yeah. I had to name my firstborn after a seller. <laughs> <laughs> Will? 
Santiago. Yo. <laughs> But you know what I mean? Those are the things. And I, I'm, I'm sorry to say, even though 2020, 21 were great years, I kind of miss the 2017, 18 and all that where yeah. you still negotiated. People were still, you know, you could still create that dream that they're going to get in a home. Hey, a that's normal. What, when I got in this show, I was like, wow, this is great. Yes. <laughs> Two years yeah. later. Oh, what the heck? I can't even go up to go to the yeah. bathroom. Yeah, man. Two years later. Oh, yeah. Man. You were from 100 miles an hour to two miles an hour back to, but, let's say, 80 right now. But you exactly. know what I, what I will say, though, that throughout those years, I really have learned to appreciate being in business because it really gives you the harsh realities of what life is, what's really going on. And unfortunately, you know, for consumers, they get a little bit of a shield with everything happening. But we're, 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 we're right in the forefront yeah. seeing these that data numbers come out, seeing this information come out that directly impacts our business and the way exactly. that we do business. So for exactly. me, it's opened up my eyes so much yeah. in these last years. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, that was uh, good. I think we're going to see positivity come out of that in the new year, guys. Uh, shifting gears, um, why haven't home prices crashed, even with high mortgage rates? This comes in from Housing Wire, um, top of the article. The most underreported housing story of the year uh, is that with mortgage rates rising to 8%, the number of homes that yeah. took price cuts before they sold was 4% less than 2022. So 4% less homes took price cuts this year than last year. And that happened even with higher home prices and higher mortgage rates in 2023. What the heck? Yeah. Yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Go. I mean, it's very simple. It's, it's what it is. All right. <laughs> it's, no, it's not just what it is. It's just inventory. Inventory is everything. Yeah. Again, yeah. I go back and I keep saying this. It's all about simple economics, supply and demand. Yeah. We don't have enough <laughs> Supply. It, remember when everyone was like, "Oh, there's gonna be a housing crash, and housing crash is coming. A housing crash is coming." You know, we know what that was. It was in volume of sales, not in price of the sale. Uh -huh. And this is evidence of that. The so, volume of sales was the lowest we've seen in decades, but the prices holding, and in some cases going back up, or after they dipped in June of 22, coming back up in 2023. Where, where uh -huh. are you gonna run in the argument? The 2022, uh, um, you know, highlight was. Uh, Hey, uh, when rates go up, prices come down. Boy, did that age really bad. <laughs> yes. yeah. And that was a selling point all, all, all across. Like, yeah, rates are higher. That's fine. Yeah. You know, prices are going to come down. Okay, hey, hold the line. Prices are going to come down. It took. Here's we're into 2023, end of 2023. Where are the prices going to come down? But here's, the, here's kind of the gnarly thing, which get, makes me keep an antenna up, uh, is that something <laughs> when mortgage rates shot to 8%, but the number of homes taking price cuts never went above 22, 2022 levels during that time. That makes me go, okay, that's the limit. That's the edge where we can go all the way to 8% and we still haven't cracked what the previous year's low yeah. listing volume was and house price sales being cut. Yeah. So even despite that and their interest rate market being substantially higher than the fall of 22, the fall of 23 did not see price cuts go, see more price cuts than 2022. Yeah. That, That's crazy. to me, signals, unfortunately, there is room to the upside if the market goes that direction. Home prices, of course, are going to continue going up because people are going to pay for it. They're outbidding each other. The cost and uh, affordability has come back yeah. in their favor again. People yeah. are thawing out, coming off the sidelines. This is what we're talking about. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, this, does, this definitely creates affordability. Again, the only thing that we're going to struggle with is the supply issue. Yeah. I mean, the you know, it, we're going to have even more refi opportunities we'll see you know 20 30 offers uh, competing with that like it's just little things that we're going to start seeing like that the bidding wars you know um I don't know. Towards the bottom of that article, it showed uh, a couple of uh, of dots about the new listing data from just week over week. So the, comparing the same week this yeah. year to the same week in 22, same week in 2021. And you saw in 2021, there were 46,000 listings. Then 2022, down to 39,000. In 2023, up to 43,000. So it's like, uh, okay, so do I, 2021 went down to 2022, and we're back up and to where back. we were back in 2021 as far as listings. I mean, we're off by just, by, by just a smidge. Yeah. But I mean, it basically took a dip and it's come back. So I, I think that new there will be more listings in the new year. I think we're you know we've been around this like you know five hundred thousand or so plus or minus average listings month over month uh, rolling yeah. over, and I think that we're going to have uh, six or seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Seven thousand. Six hundred. Seven hundred. Seven hundred fifty thousand in the new year. I, I honestly know. do. That's crazy. I, I feel, honestly do. I feel that uh, um, twenty twenty two was a speed bump. We got through it, mm. and then twenty twenty three just kept going. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. You, the speed was, bump was it, there. It was, <laughs> and, and what I mean is a speed bump, but a speed bump where you hit it kind of fast, where you just oh, <laughs> but you got a flat tire or two. <laughs> no, no, no. Here's here's what it is. It, it's, it's 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 that slow speed bump, like when I cracked the front bumper on your car. Oh, oh the slow, slow, I took that thing slow and the angle, and that so, was 2022 okay. for me because I cracked that stupid thing. I was like, damn, I even hey, took this one cautious. Okay, okay so uh, I was cautious, uh, and it still happened. Uh, 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 I'll add to that. So you know. Tr- trying to ease into the economy and make it you know oh no not that bad you broke it yeah but if you would have just kept going full force boom, you pointed <laughs> you, you pointed to him i'm the one that broke it shout out to herb knox thanks for sharing the cost yeah. of me on really breaking i, I it. was gonna say brian did you do something to my <laughs> no? no 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 i just left the top the top kind of unhinged oh, that's right <laughs> oh my hey, god i didn't that's break right. anything i just didn't put it back correctly which that's is that's <laughs> right that's right that's right well i think that's a good sign guys you know um, I'm, i love uh, you i'm ready for that <laughs> I'm ready for this. Uh, I'm I'm really glad the housing market did not crash and prices didn't crash. Uh, I think it's a, a substantial. And the Corvette is okay, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a substantial, yeah. a substantial uh, win for 2023. So, all right, guys, closing it out. Uh, we got from CNBC: mortgage rates are dropping. Here's what to expect in 2024 if you want to buy a home. Experts say. Quick bullet points. After a year full of record high interest rates and home prices, experts say there are signs of improvement for the housing market in 2024. In December, the average mortgage rates dropped below 7% for the first time since August. And after an 8% peak in October, which pushed housing costs to the highest level since 2000. That I hate. I always hate, I always hate references that are decades old. Uh, and the decline poses good news for buyers, said Jessica uh, Lotz, yeah. Deputy Chief and Vice President of Research at the National Association of Realtors. Yeah. So for me right here, what stands out, the biggest thing is, however, consumers may still feel discouraged, added lots, as affordability may still be a challenge, which, you know, I, I, I agree so because of the fact that if even rates come down, more people are going to flood, so prices are going to remain the same. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to help a, a few people, yeah. the people that, you know, have that income or got that income boost, like military people getting an uh, increase on their BH and BAS. Yes. Sure you Congratulations, tap in and by the way. Welcome, welcome. Yes. Um, but 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 like I said, you know, like <laughs> if people don't have a higher income and they have the exact same situation as last year, yeah, the rate might help a little bit, but you can only go yeah. as far as your income and your debt's going to let you go. And yeah, the rate might help, but it's not going to be a drastic like, hey, they dropped half a percent. Now I can afford 150K yeah. more. I mean, yeah. uh, they, they may also be considering the fact that consumer debt is a the all time one, one trillion you yeah. know what i mean so all these things will factor in yeah well I, you know again this mentions home builders once again and i think that that getting home builders maybe i'm not gonna say inspired that's yeah. probably too strong encouraged to pull more permits build more homes put some money on the line and actually try to come up with some more inventory it's clear that there's an inventory shortage yeah. so it should be a lesser risk for them to build in 2024 and 25 than it might have been in 22 and 23. I get that, especially in a rising interest rate environment, which we were in since March of 2022. Yeah. So I think that the reference of home builders here being encouraged, not inspired, but encouraged um, is, is, is good. And I think that, you know, I, it, this is probably too large of a prediction, but maybe not. We'll look back and you guys can throw a pie at my face if I'm wrong. <laughs> But this will probably be the same window now for people as December of like 2021 was, right? Mm. Before 22 hit, there was like this spot where housing prices were good, rates were all right, and then boom, March 22, everything started taking off. I, I should have bought. I think that like it rocketed all the way, and then now it's kind of settled. And I think it's settled, 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 and it's about to go again. You there know what? That, you know what that brings me back to, Andy? Bless now that you, you mentioned that, you know what that brings me back to? Back in 2008, when I was in seventh grade, oh, running a mile. I was going to say. Like, what was I thinking running a mile in PE when I could have been out getting real estate and building equity? Uh, like, what was I thinking? If you're in seventh grade right now, just stop. Just, <laughs> this, guy, this, guy, this guy really trying to just make an age reference about the market. Exactly. how old we are. Look, man, I've been bold forever. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, look, the, they're, the, 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 I do believe what it says in the article is that the, the American dream is still owning a home. I really do believe yeah. that. It's for so many people. There's a, such a large percentage of people where that achieving the quote-unquote American dream is buying a house, yeah. and this is going to be that window. In my opinion, this is it because, again, it would have to take something catastrophic for yeah. home prices to just take a nosedive, and we don't have the inventory. We yeah. have more demand still than we do, yeah. and again, I'm not saying that San Diego is a microcosm of everything else that's happening in the country. It's not, actually. It really isn't. 
Um, I mean, gosh, what was that article a couple weeks ago came out? San Diego's the least affordable place to live in the country, like per capita. I'm like, oh, that sucks. Because that means we surpassed New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Miami. I'm like, those are the big yeah. dogs. And yeah. somehow we climbed the top. And we have, we're, one of, the, cool we're one of the states hey, with the least amount cool. of supply. Too. And, and if this is the most expensive city, wouldn't you look at that like, hey, maybe I should invest there <laughs> if you're able to? Like, Well, I don't know. That's a short well, that's argument if because we just, we just surpassed, my, you know, like I said, yeah. Miami, New York, Los Angeles. Oh, Los Angeles is the most expensive city. Shouldn't you move here? No. No. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> we don't want your traffic. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I'm going to just step up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just be quiet on that one. <laughs> no, but to your point earlier, Brian, I think this is the window for younger generations, honestly. So if you're, you, you are, you are, uh, if you are under the age of 40 right now and you have not yet bought a house, like do this now when you're in your maybe peak income and earning years or you're about to cross the threshold of those peak earning years, this is when you should be honest and be serious about making the right calls, the right emails, and figuring out where you're at now, where do you got to be in order to buy a house, and then just determine if yeah. it's right for you to do or not. And and I'm going to go out on a limb and say, as as a younger generation, I believe with we value more experiences and our discretionary spending, that that also plays a big part in where we want to live. Because if we say, hey, I got a payment of $4,000, but then that only leaves me 500 to live my life, people are going to double that's think tough. and say, hey, I don't want to do that because I still want to live my life in the way that I've been living. Yeah. And I feel that's that's a mentality that the younger generation has adopted because of the fact that we want everything so fast. Mm-hmm. Whereas mm-hmm. people that are old generation, they're okay with saving that money up. They're okay with staying in the house for 10 plus years. Whereas a millennial or a younger generation is actually looking at it like, well, how much can I make in equity if I hold it for three, three, three years? Right. Or how can I house hack to make sure I still have enough discretionary yeah. income or money to be able to live my life? Yeah. And I think it's at a, it's at, it's at a clash of generations where, you know, some people are looking at one way, other people are looking at another way, but the economy isn't helping anybody's climate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, 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 people are going to make their own decision based on the behavior, the yeah. experience. Yes. And I do think generationally they bring some difference to the table, but that's why I'm advocating for it. If you, are yeah. trying to have the America dream or own a piece of it, whatever you want to call it, do that now. Like figure it out and ask the questions and then just cope with the answer and then decide, okay, the answer isn't what I want. Cool. Fix it. What do you got to adjust? If the answer is better than you want. Cool. Then what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Everything's a sacrifice. Make the sacrifice and believe that you will win because I believe that you will win. Santa oh, Claus wow. said the San Diego State someone was going to be it. Stanford. Someone, yes. I believe that we someone will win. Week, I believe that. We, someone went to. Uh, let's go. Let's someone do went this. to San Diego State. And I came recently. with that fire, you know? <laughs> So I'm good with it. All right. One, one well, last thing I will say about affordability is that everybody has a different situation, right? You got people that are married with children, people that are married with no children, people that are single, people that are single with children. So all that takes into, into factor that, you know, a lot of people are going to have different affordability levels. So therefore, you know, depending on where you're at, that's going to play a huge part of what you can afford and where you could go live. So really, really for me this year, bunker down on financial, save. financial, uh, financial literacy, save and have and know where your money is going. Mm-hmm. Correct. I mean, if you're already renting, well, you know. Even better, you have you have time yeah. to make a plan. Well, and you know what you can afford already. Whatever yeah, you're exactly. paying for rent, you can afford and still pay your bills. You're not going to debt, then there. There's Use it as line. a baseline. Yep, that's right. All right. Awesome. Okay, guys. So, I, Guys, I can't believe Christmas is over. That's right. I know. Isn't that weird? Jeez. That's crazy. Like the year passed super fast. I mean. Crazy. I'm, I'm excited for New Year's I coming honestly up. honestly still felt like I wanted to come over here and be dressed like Santa. Yeah, no, don't. I'm glad you didn't. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, Even though I feel like be, Santa now. Before we sign off for the last show of the year, Memo, favorite part of your show today? You know, favorite part of my show, again, is just seeing the optimism of our 2024 because mm-hmm. I feel like... Even myself, I need to see the light at the end of the tunnel, even though we understand data and all this stuff, you know, seeing this information, seeing, you know, unemployment going up, inflation going down, kind of teeter totting with one another. It just makes me feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel and hearing this news that the rates, you know, the Fed funds rate will actually start being reduced. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel good. So seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I like that. Brian, how about you? Favorite part of the show? Favorite part of the show, of course, being back with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, by the way. No, but uh, uh, in, in all truthfulness for me, it's, you know, having a positive outlook ending the year. Um, last year was so much uncertainty going into 2023, not knowing what was going to happen. Thankfully, this year, we've, you know, been following the news. We've been following the data. And based on what we've been noticing, we think things are going to get a little bit better and things are looking more positive. Now, I'm not saying things are going to get great. But we're having a more positive outlook. And I like that because a lot of more people are starting to really pay attention, read between the headlines and actually understand what the data means for you, your situation and how that can empower yeah. you. And, you know, I'm going to just mention when you because you say the news to us, I hear the news, Fox News, CNN. No, we're hearing getting this information data news 
from the right people. Housing sources. Housing yep. sources. Ha- real you know, data. People that this is what they do day in, day out. They monitor home sales, pending sales, you know, everything. Which yep. And that's who we follow. It's, yep. it's, it's data, not uh, uh, opinions. There you go. My favorite part of the show, guys, is going to be this quote because it is what I believe is going to carry us into 2024 is first time buyers stand a chance at this period of time. It's a trade off. Do they want to run the risk of encountering higher competition when rates are lower or do they want to increase the probability of securing home ownership? Mm. I think that is going to be the great test of 2024. It's a massive prediction, I know, but I honestly think it will be the difference of that generation owning and obtaining wealth, that 40X like you've talked about before yeah. or not. Let's and go. Like, let's go. I like that, you know, to get go off of that. Listen, it's a new year. Start yeah. your new year with the bank. Start preparing now. That's right. You know, so that'll be like a good new year's resolution is have that 40% and we will love to be the contributors to that and help you get to that 40% yeah. wealth. Yeah. You know, 40 X, 40 X, 40 yeah. times. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'll take 40%. Yeah, 40. 40%, 40 yeah, 40 X. 40 X. Good. Well, thank you guys. It's been an awesome first season here in the studio like Dang, this for yeah, 2023. Yeah. You guys take did such home. a great job. Take us yeah. home. Excellent. Thank you guys all for watching, for listening, for tuning in. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video. And if you go back and watch other episodes, you're like, oh man, there was a gem in there. Go find it. Watch yeah. our shorts, watch the clips uh, that are topic by topic, watch the whole show, send it to somebody you love and care about. And then, Join us in 2024. We have a brand new show coming up that we've already been in production for, guys. We're launching it the first week of January. It is called The Friends of Mortgage Mortgage Heroes. Heroes. You have William, Brian, and myself interviewing and talking to friends of ours who work in and around mortgage real estate to help increase your education, increase your knowledge, and your awareness of all the things that are pertinent outside of just getting a loan, buying a house, selling a house. And we are really excited. We have some amazing guests that have been on. that, And we learned a lot of new things, even just in the process of recording the show. So keep your eyes open for that for the first week of January. And we'll have a new episode of that coming out every single Friday. Exactly. And the whole idea of this, Andy, again, Brian, is to give back to our community. Not all of us are into mortgages, but we may be into, you know, property management or understanding the laws or understanding what certain things entail. So we're getting the true professionals in their field to share their experiences, what makes them successful so that we could become a better resource for you guys. So don't. Wait to no, so don't miss out on that show next year. Yeah, and we'll <laughs> see you guys That's next right. year. Yeah, happy New right. Year's to you guys. Wishing you nothing but the best from the bottom of our hearts and the Mortgage Heroes team. Bye guys.